Well, hello everyone, Jessica Coulter here with you. I am the CEO and founder of Ace Cookie Tutoring, and today we're going to be talking all about the English section and those practice questions that you or your child has hopefully taken and graded and figured out which ones are going well and which ones aren't. So this presentation is going to be all about how to do some of those problems. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hope this helps. If your child hasn't taken the practice test yet, here is the link. This will take you to my Facebook group. And depending on when you joined us, you either know it as a six day ACT study challenge or as the ACT prep video series. So make sure you go to this link and find the full practice test before you move on to the rest of this presentation. If you've already taken the practice test, great. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Here are the correct answers to those practice questions. They are also in the group, but just in case it's easier, here they are for you as well. Just know there are 12 practice questions that I think are worthwhile for your child to practice, but we won't be going over all of the answers today, just some of them. So if there's a question your child missed, would love to work with him or her one-on-one, -on -one, either in person or via Zoom to, excuse me, help him or her figure out how to do that problem. Before moving into explanations, just wanted to point out something that not all people know. Each section of the ACT is full of questions, right? But those questions can be divided into categories. And the reason I point this out is that depending on which category of questions your child is struggling with in a particular section, that should focus his or her attention when studying. Now, in the English section, we have three categories, production of writing, knowledge of language, and the conventions of standard English. Now, it's important to realize what type of question in the English section you're struggling with because the knowledge of language questions have the least amount of questions throughout the entire section. So if your child's missing those questions, yeah, we wanna figure out how to get those questions correct. But at the same time, if those are the only questions your child's missing, that's not a bad thing. I mean, the, the, the conventions of standard English, excuse me, those are gonna have the most questions in our practice tests and throughout the entire English section. So the conventions of standard English are way more important than the other types of categories in the English section. So focus on the conventions of standard English unless your child has that down pat and is only worried about the other types of questions. Okay, now we're ready to start focusing on these actual practice questions. We're gonna start with question number 46. So depending on how familiar you or your child is with the English section, what you're gonna notice is we're gonna have an underlined portion in the passage. So that is where we're gonna focus our attention. So that is what we need to fix, okay? And then we're gonna have four answer choices in the English section. That's gonna be different on some of the other sections. You might have more answer choices. So what we need to do is figure out, is this underlined portion correct or do we need to fix it? So I usually start with the beginning of the sentence, which is here in June. Now you'll notice there's a sentence before this sentence with a problem. Now I always tell students, do not read any sentences without portions underlined unless necessary. So when you're practicing, I might go ahead and read everything and figure out, okay, did I need that to answer this question? Did I not? But on the actual ACT, only read what's necessary. Don't do any more experimenting. You should have your methods down. So this sentence before says, during the summer of 1988, I watched the Yellowstone National Park go up in flames. Now, the only reason this is important, this sentence that doesn't have an underlying portion, is to realize it says, during the summer of 1988. So hopefully we all know we're in the year 2020. So that means this is gonna be in the past what the author is gonna tell us about. So in the sentence, the next one, it says in June, fires ignited by lightning have been allowed to burn unsuppressed. 
Okay, so in June, that's referring to the 1988. So we're still in the past. So now we need to decide, okay, is fires ignited by lightning showing the past? And we know it is. So whenever we see an ED, that means past. So we know, okay, well, at least the tense is correct. So if I look at my answer choices, I've got G, fires having. Having is not in the past, but been ignited. So, okay, we got the ED on ignited, but having been tells us it's not in the past. It's a different tense. Now we've got fires, comma, the kind ignited. Okay, so we got ignited, that's good. And then J, fires ignited and started. So those are both good. So now we're down to F, H, and J. So the next thing we need to look at is we've got some commas. So we have this comma after June, and that's the only comma in the sentence, the way it is. And then if I look at G, I don't see our G, H, I have a comma here after fires, and then I have a comma after lightning. So depending on how familiar you are with grammar, we were going to call that an appositive. So an appositive is a set of words, or maybe only a word, depending on the sentence, that is going to add some description. It's going to tell some extra details. So in this example, it's telling us the extra details about fires. So I need to decide is, or are, excuse me, these words, the kind of by lightning, important to the meaning of the sentence. Okay? So the way I always tell students to decide that is we're going to take out the parts of words or the words in between the commas and plug them into the sentence. So I would have in June, excuse me, in June, fires, and then it says it would be in June, fires had been allowed to burn unsuppressed. So yes, the sentence makes sense, but we don't know anything about lightning. So we have to decide, is that important to the meaning of the sentence? So now let's look at J. We don't have any commas here. So the only difference between the way it is now and then what we could change it to would we have started by lightning. So something to know about the English section, we want to keep it really concise. So concise is the goal in the English section. So I need to now decide, do I need those extra words? Do I need started by lightning? And the answer is no, I don't. Okay, I don't want all that extra wordiness. So now the question is, is the correct answer F or H? So all it really comes down to are these commas. Are these commas where they need to be? Are we using them? correctly. And the answer is, I want F. That is the right answer because if I use the commas that I have in H, I lose lightning. And if I lose lightning, that's a really important detail to the sentence and to the passage as a whole. So I know that was a pretty detailed answer. If it didn't make a whole lot of sense, make sure you go back through and re-listen to the slide and make sure you understand how we eliminated each of those answer choices. So before we go on to the next problem, I just wanted to let you know, thank you for joining the group and also wanted to make sure you're enjoying the presentation. So hopefully the English section is starting to make a little more sense. And lastly, thank you for being in the group. Do also know that you can follow us on Facebook outside of this private group. So you can follow my company, Ace Cookie Tutoring. Just go to that link on your screen, facebook.com forward slash Ace Cookie Tutoring. There we'll be posting other tutorials similar to this one that are available for everyone, no matter whether they're related to the ACT or middle school math or maybe high school English, a whole variety of topics. We'll also post daily resources and our monthly special. So we'd love to see you on our Facebook page as well. All right, we're ready to work on question number 49. So we are skipping questions 47 and 48. So those are really similar to question 46. 
So if your child has any problems, I suggest going back and re-listening to my slide about question 46. Do you know all questions are considered conventions of standard English? So those are really important for your child to understand. So if there's any struggle at all, highly recommend either going back and listening to that slide or booking a lesson with me. would love to work with your students one-on-one -on -one and help him or her figure out exactly how to identify the right answer. So number 49, we are looking here down at this part of the sentence, underline flames and its. Now, something that throws off some students is to realize that there might be more than one question in one sentence. So you'll see up here we have 48. Now that is not what we're asking. So we can just not worry about that this time. Now something else students don't always realize is you can use one answer choice from a previous question to help you figure out the question that is later in the sentence. So we're going to go ahead and work this one and hopefully that makes a little more sense. So we start all the way up here and the sentence is, by the time park officials have come to the pressure of public opinion and decide, or whatever you decided to choose for your answer choice 48, to try to extinguish the flames, it's too late. Okay, so I have a period and then I have capital letter it's. Now if I look at my answer choices, I have got a comma and then it's over here for B. I have flames with comma and then it was. And then I have flames with a semicolon. So we need to realize a few things. First, what is the role of a semicolon? You know, is it different than a comma? Is it different than a period? Some students don't know, unfortunately. So a semicolon is going to separate two complete sentences and it's going to be two sentences that have something in common, like a similar idea. Okay. I can tell you for this example that is not going to work. All right. Now the next thing to realize that some students struggle with is it's. And again, like I said, this might be kind of an aha moment for some students. That can mean it is or it can mean it was. So these two answer choices, B and C, are really pretty much the same. So this could be a little tricky. So we need to decide first, do I want a comma or do I want a period? So hopefully if I say the word run on, if I say the word fragment, and then if I say the word complete sentence, I hope your student knows the difference. If not, that is something I would most definitely figure out before your child takes the actual ACT because that is kind of a red flag immediately when you are working on these sentences. Is it's just like, okay, if it's a complete sentence, then I want to complete, com if it's a complete sentence, I want to keep it that way. Or if it's not a complete sentence, I know it can't be no change. Or if it's a run on, that means I need to separate the sentence somehow, okay? So that is something, like I said, very monumental and something I could definitely help your child identify no problem at all. So in this example for number 49, if your child reads this and just the part up to the period, by the time park officials succumbed to the pressure of public opinion and decide to try to extinguish the flames, that is not a complete sentence, okay? So it is definitely not no change. So for 49, we now are at B, and C. So hopefully we remember whether we're in present or past tense. You remember that from question 46 and remember we're looking for that ED so it's succumbed up here. Okay we know it's going to be the correct answer choice for letter or excuse me for number 49 is C. Okay and that's because it was is in the past. All right, so if you had any questions about that, definitely feel free to book a lesson or re-listen to the slide to start with. All righty, so we're going to skip a couple more questions and go on to 52. So this question looks like it's on the second page. So make sure you looked at both pages 
of the practice test when you went to that link or if you went directly to the group and found the document. So 52 is right here. It says large files, or excuse me, large fires are after all necessary despite the continued health of the forest ecosystem. Okay, so a little tidbit here in the English section. We remember we want to be concise. I see here on 52, all answer choices are only one word. So this one's gonna come down to A, what sounds right, and then making sure we know exactly what is the correct word usage when I have the word necessary. So your child can do this a couple different ways. First, we can look at the following sentence. And so remember, we talked about only reading what's necessary. So if we read the next sentence, yeah, it might take a little bit longer because we're having to read more, depending on how fast of a reader your child is, or it could help. So if we read the next sentence, it says fires thin out overcrowded areas and allow it to reach species of plants. Okay, so it's talking about the fires thin out. So now we need to decide, are the fires good? or are the fires bad? So once I know that, that will help me decide, do I want the word despite? Okay, so if I have despite, that means the fires are bad. So if the sentence after 52 is saying the fires are good, I don't want the word despite. Okay, now the next sentence says, fires thin out overcrowded areas. So that tells us something good that's doing, excuse me, something good the fire is doing. So I want to say the fires are good. If the fires are good, excuse me, <clears throat> there's no way, no change, if I leave the word despite, is gonna work. Okay, so that takes us down to G, H, and G, excuse me, G, H, and J, okay. Now, another way to do this question, other than going through each of these answer choices and deciding which one is proving or showing that the fire is good, is to look at the word necessary. So this way I think is harder. Only one of these words is gonna work with necessary. Only one of these words is acceptable, I think might be a good way of saying it, to use with necessary. So the correct answer for number 52 is J. Okay, so let's go ahead and now work on question 53. So we're gonna go ahead and not worry about question 52 because we just did that one. So let's work on 53, which looks like it's allow it is what's underlined. So if I look at my answer choices, I have allow it, and then I have the sun, and then I have the sun. So I've got kind of two parts going on in this question. I need to decide, is it the word it, or is it the word sun? And then I need to decide, is it allow, or is it the word allows? So those are the two things really being tested here. This one's definitely a little harder because it is knowledge of language, okay? So this is not gonna be the most popular type of question, a little harder, but definitely easy to figure out. So my first question to you or to your child, depending on who's listening, I've got allow it. What does it refer to? So if I go to the beginning of the sentence, it says fires thin out overcrowded areas and allow it to reach species of plants, stunted by shade. So the way this works, if I have a pronoun, which is what the word it is, I have to go back in the sentence to the last noun used. So if I go back to it, it could refer to areas, that's a noun, okay? And then fires is a noun. So none of those are what it refers to. It actually refers to the sun. So we know there's no way allows it or no change is correct, all right? And we know that because the fact it talks about stunted by the shade. So why would fires reach species of plants stunted by shade? I mean, the fire is gonna go wherever it wants to go. The shade does not matter. 
So sun, shade, those seem to go together. So that would help your child get down to 50-50. So now we're deciding, is it allow or is it allows? And this comes to noun, this comes down to number agreement. When I have allow without the S, that means more than one. Okay, so that's something a little tricky for some students, knowing when to put that S on and when not. So, and I have five years, so there's that S there, and but we only know of one son. All right, so the answer to 53 is C, allow the son, because I have five years, and that goes with allow. If you find yourself with some more questions or looking for some more guidance and you're thinking this is really helpful and you want to practice even more, we would love to work with you either in person, online, or through Zoom. And we do offer three different ACT packages. You can see those three different packages if you go to that link on your screen, acecookietutoring.com forward slash book online. So we'd love to help you either for two hours or four hours and then create a study plan that works best for your child and also create some custom questions if you're interested. So we will go ahead and get back to the answer explanations. Just wanna let you know that one-on-one -on -one tutoring is available. Okay, we're ready for question 54. So before we get going on this one, just wanna point out that this is an apostrophe question and I have done an apostrophe tutorial. So if this is something your student struggles with, maybe he or she got this one wrong, or maybe he or she has this problem in his papers, or this is just something, this is not going well, no matter if it's on the ACT or whatever class, I have that tutorial. Highly encourage your student watch that. Talk all about using apostrophes when it's a plural noun, when it's a singular noun, and then possessive, not possessive, contractions, all that good stuff. So let's work on number 54. So here, right now, it's pines with an S and then an apostrophe after the S. So what we need to know, and I'm not gonna go into too many details because you could always watch that tutorial and I'll give you more detail. So I have pines, P-I-N-E apostrophe S, or pines if I do the P-I-N-E-S and then apostrophe. So if I do the apostrophe S, this means one pine. And I think we all know pine is a tree. Or if I do the pines with the S at the end and then the apostrophe after the S, this is going to mean multiple pines. Okay. So that's one of the very first things to remember to know. So I need to decide, is this talking about more than one pine tree or multiple pine trees? or one, I'm sorry, I think I said something twice. So the sentence says, in the case of the lodgepole pine, fire is essential to reproduction. The pine's cone open only when exposed to temperatures greater than 112 degrees. So our correct answer here is H, and that is because the cone belongs to the pine, okay? And we know we're talking about one tree. It says the. Okay, so I want the pines cones. I'm only talking about one tree here. Okay, and then I know it has to have possession, so it can't be G because the cones belong to the pine. All right, and then you'll notice that there is more than one cone associated with the tree because I don't think any of us have ever seen a pine tree with just one cone. So the correct answer for 54 is H. All right, so here is the last question I want to go over with you guys, number 57. And so the correct answer on 57 is going to be D as in David. And that is the writer's assessment that the fire was not a catastrophe was accurate. So a couple different ways to do this problem. One is most definitely quicker than the other. I think if your student's more capable of doing this, and kind of make this logical step, 
would most definitely recommend it. My, we see at the very beginning of the sentence, it says my competence. That refers to the writer. Because remember, this whole passage is about 1988 and a fire in Yellowstone. So this author is just writing about his experience. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the writer. None of the other answer choices talk about the writer. Okay, now something else to do, think about for this that I also think works but takes a little longer. And uh, after you guys watch the study tip video, you'll notice and learn hopefully how to pick out keywords. So if I go through the keywords of each answer choice here, I have A says a forest animal population. Okay, and then I have B talks about a new series of vegetation. And then C talks about other forests. Okay. So the question is, this is the last question of the passage. We know what the passage is talking about. We know the main ideas. We now know what was discussed in the passage. So we can ask ourselves, was the forest animal population ever discussed in the years following the fire? Did we ever learn about new series of vegetation? And then did it ever talk about other forests in the passage? And the answer is no. So, two ways to answer this question. We can either ask ourselves, what does my refer to? Or, and I think is easier and maybe a little slower, is to figure out the keyword in each answer choice and decide, was that discussed in the passage? That is everything I have for you. So I hope you found those answer explanations helpful. Didn't want to go into too many details, but definitely wanted to set you and your children on the right path. So hopefully you've got a better idea now of how to be successful in the English section. If you'd like some more help in the English section or the ACT overall, just go to that link on your screen, acecookietutoring.com forward slash book online. And maybe you're looking for some more resources. I do offer paid resources at a different link, acecookietutoring.com forward slash shop. So I'll be creating different study materials as well as different activities relating to the ACT as well as other subjects in case you have some younger kiddos or maybe some even older ones. And finally, we do also have an email list. So if you'd like to jump on that list to find out what the next month's monthly special will be, as well as receive our monthly newsletter, join our newsletter club, kind of the way to think of it, as acecookietutoring at gmail.com. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video.